Hello and uh, welcome to the first part of my Mario Maker tutorial on adventure platforming or uh, Metroidvania as it's more commonly referred to in gaming circles. Um, coming from the style pioneered by games like Super Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of Night, that kind of thing. Um, I just wanted to do a... These are my... <laughs> Jesus, this is off to a good start. These are my favorite uh, style of uh, levels. It's my favorite style of platforming games in general. And uh, they're a rare breed for whatever reason. Not many people seem to be making them. People are making them, but not many. So I thought I'd do um, just a short little tutorial series. I'm going to try to keep each of these videos fairly quick and to the point, which I'm doing a terrible job with right now. Um, <laughs> but this one, we're just going to answer the question, what, what, what is a Metroidvania? What are you, what are you even talking about, guy? And uh, to illustrate that, we have, um, we have this wonderful level. So let's, let's, to answer the question first, let's talk about traditional Mario, okay? So in traditional Mario, you go right, all right? And sometimes, to shake things up, you might be presented with some sort of barrier, right? So here I can't go down. Um, but here I have a mushroom, like right next to the thing. And this is, this is actually pretty common in, in kind of traditional Mario design. You're presented with a barrier, and immediately next to the barrier, you have the solution. Now, if you wanted to get um, crazy with it, you know that might be up there, and then you've got your fire bars in the vicinity or whatever. You know, very carefully crafted uh, masterpiece of level design right there. And so now, you know, it's... It's more of a, an obstacle, but the idea is the same. Um, it just shakes up the gameplay a little bit, but the solution is right next to the thing. That that is that is a very common kind of traditional Mario thing. To put that in Metroidvania terms, though, we're gonna look inside the pipe. So here we have the same area. Um, it's a little bigger. It's a little bigger, but it's Mario, so we're going to go right. And uh, when we go right, we're going to find our obstacle. We did it. We found the barrier. See, it's the same level. Uh, never mind that over there. Same, same shit, but we don't have our mushroom. Where's our mushroom? So we come back over here. There's only one other place for us to go. So we're going to uh, go up here. And there's a box. That seems, that seems hopeful. This is going to kill me, isn't it? I'm trying to do a tutorial. And uh, I shouldn't have placed any enemies. And there's our mushroom. Uh, <laughs> far away. Which hopefully, visually, illustrates the point that we're getting across. Which is that um, shit's far away. <laughs> in a nutshell, how you make a Metroidvania in uh, Mario is you take the barrier and solution to barrier system but instead of putting the solution to the barrier next to the barrier you put it very far away um and you do lots of this and you have them crisscrossing one another so here we have a p-door and these bricks that we walked by on the way those are other barriers and we don't have the solutions to them yet um This is such a bad... <laughs> the, look, the tutorials are going to get better from here. It's all uphill. It's all uphill, okay? It can only be uphill. Bear with me. <laughs> uh, God, my train of thought. It's a good thing you can edit YouTube videos. That's a, that's a powerful um, feature of the uh, medium of uh, recording that I will definitely be sure to utilize to make this uh, less of a clusterfuck. So, 
in a Mario Metroidvania level. Um, it's basically traditional Mario gameplay. You'll note that the platforming's all very simple. The enemies are exactly what you'd see in a normal Mario level for the most part. It's everything's just it's basically just traditional Mario in multiple directions. Um, with barriers all over the place and with the solutions of the barriers all over the place. Um, and we're going to get more into this into the next part, but we're going to call the items are usually in a in a set sequence. The things you need are in an order that you are supposed to collect them in, which we're going to call the progression. So in this case, our progression begins with the mushroom, and maybe somewhere over here, there's a P-switch. And then somewhere in here, there's a spiked helmet. And so now we, we have the beginnings of a progression forming, where the player's in this environment, and first they want to find this, to go through there, to find the P-switch, to come back, to go through there, to get the spiked helmet to come back, to go through there. Um, and they're kind of snaking their way through the environment, back and forth, unlocking more areas, finding uh, more places to go, more things to use, and uh, so forth. Just kind of snowballing, snowballing the item acquisition process towards, towards the goal, wherever that may be. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is... Uh, Metroidvania level design, but of course we're gonna get more into the specifics of that later. Didn't I say this was gonna be short and to the point? I, there's one last thing I wanted to add in this episode, which was that um, what it isn't is pretty important too. What isn't Metroidvania? Obviously, it's not linear traditional Mario. It's also not putting a Samus costume on Mario and still being linear traditional Mario. Very often people make that mistake. They think, hey, I made a Metroidvania level. I put a Samus Mushroom on Mario. This is a Metroidvania now. I mean, that's Metroid themed. It's not Metroidvania though, most of the time. Um, if it's just, if you took the costume away and, and it's still, like it was just Mario, then it's obviously, it was never Metroidvania to begin with. So that's one mistake. Um, another thing is that it's not a puzzle. It's not, it's not a puzzle. Puzzles are a very different breed of level. But the goal here should never be to confuse the player. Uh, <laughs> which uh, I know some people will lay into me for, but... It's it's a question like there's you have to figure what you have to figure out is where to go and not what to do. Which is basically the opposite of a puzzle where normally you don't really have to figure out where to go, you're looking at the elements and trying to figure out what to do with them. But in this case, you know what a mushroom allows you to do. You know what a spike helmet allows you to do. You know what a P switch allows you to do. Um, so there's no confusion about what to do, you're just trying to work out where to go. So first you go up here, and that's not it, and then you go over here, and ding, 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 and, you know, you connect the dots and work around that way. Um, so there's a lot of exploration, but not a lot of actual puzzling. Um, so that's kind of the distinction between those genres, but I'm, I'm really rambling, and this is... One hell of a train wreck. I'm gonna try to uh, clean it up in future, <laughs> in future episodes. But that that that's gonna be part one. Um, and hopefully, I didn't scare you away from clicking on part two. So, all right. Thanks for uh, yeah. 